Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Spam Jain. Let's go to hospital and solve a case. It's a vlog day. Let's do this. Let's go guys. Go to hospital and solve a case. Chal. बंद कहाँ से होएगा? और ही नहीं किया। अरे बंद कहाँ से होएगा? बंद मत करो रुको। बाहर तो नहीं लगने दो। तो पहले आज मेरी भी मेरी भी आवाज आ गई। इतनी जल्दी आज तो क्या हो गया आप मेरी मम्मी तो इतनी जल्दी क्या आपको बंद कर देंगे? Right now inside the hospital. Case है ही सर. Case तो हो गया. अस्पताल आए तो case तो मिले गए और एक interesting case और मिला है. That is acute intestinal obstruction. And इस case का ये file में तुरंत आया तो मैंने ऐसा नहीं कि तुरंत record किया. पहले मैंने इसका पूरा file पढ़ा है. X-ray वगैरह देखे हैं. Hopefully वो आपको दिखाऊंगा. और फिर उसके बाद लगा हाँ यार acute intestinal obstruction एक ऐसा topic है जिसके बारे में हम बात कर सकते हैं. तो इनिशियली तो जब ऐसा केसेस आते हैं तो सबसे पहले तो जो भी खाना पीना चल रहा होता है मरीज का वो सब बंद करना होता है सर पेशेंट को एन पी ओ रखना होता है दैट इज नील पर ओरल फिर उसके बाद उसको एन जी ट्यूब का इंसर्ट करते हैं अगर हो पाए तो वरना अगर एन जी ट्यूब प्रेफर करो तो बहुत बढ़िया वरना फुल आई वी ट्रीटमेंट भी आप दे सकते हो अगर गैंग्रीन फॉर्मेशन हो गया होगा अगर ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन की वजह से तो होपफुली जो मैं केस फाइल पढ़ रहा हूँ उसमें गैंग्रीन फॉर्मेशन नहीं है सर्जरी ऑलरेडी परफॉर्म कर चुके हैं सर तो उस रिगार्डिंग तो हम डायरेक्टली सर से बात करेंगे मैं क्या बता सकता हूँ केस के बारे में वो बेसिक बेसिक चीज़ें हैं पेशेंट को कंजर्वेटिव मैनेजमेंट में क्या क्या दे रहे हैं हॉस्पिटल के अंदर राइल्स ट्यूब तो हमने इंसर्ट कराई है कंजर्वेटिव मैनेजमेंट पेंटोसिड 40 एम जी आई वी ओ डी पेंटोसिड क्या है सर पेंटोसिड मतलब पेंटाप्राजोल एसिडिटी के लिए डाइनापार दर्द के लिए अपन दे रहे हैं इसके अलावा इंजेक्शन है टी पैप फोर पॉइंट फाइव ग्राम टी डी ये मेरे ख्याल से एक आई डोंट नो ये क्या है <laughs> नहीं पता हो तो सीधा बोलो नहीं पता है मेट्रोजेल ये मेट्रोजेल मतलब मेट, अगला इंजेक्शन है मेट्रोजेल हंड्रेड एम एल टी डी एस टी डी एस मतलब तीन दिन में तीन बार बी बी डी मतलब दो बार ओ डी मतलब एक बार ये तो आई थिंक सर सबको पता ही है तो मेट्रोनिडाजोल की इंजेक्शन है इसके अंदर मेट्रोनिडाजोल ये एक एंटीबायोटिक है ये भी याद रखना सवाल आता है एम सी आई के अंदर मेट्रोनिडाजोल का ड्रग मेट्रोनिडाजोल कहाँ कहाँ दिए जाते हैं ना तो वेजाइनोसिस वगैरह वाली कंडीशन में ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस होता है सडनली याद आ गया आर एल दे रहे हैं हम थाउजेंड एम और डी भी दे रहे हैं थाउजेंड एम और एन भी दे रहे हैं थाउजेंड एम हम डी इसलिए दे रहे हैं क्योंकि पेशेंट डायबिटिक नहीं है ठीक है तो ये ये चीज़ें पेशेंट को हमने कंजर्वेटिव ट्रीटमेंट दिया और रेगुलर हमने ये देखो चार्ट बना रखा है पूरा चार्ट बना रखा है कि इस समय पे इस इतने बजे हमने शुगर टेस्ट किया इतने बजे हमने बी चेक किया सारी चीज़ें फाइल के अंदर दे रखी होती है उसके बाद मेरा फेवरेट पूरी फाइल के अंदर पता चल गया निकले कहाँ गया ओटी नोट के बारे में ओटी नोट्स अगर कोई इंसान हॉस्पिटल में आके ओटी नोट्स इतना सभी पढ़ लेता है ना तो सर्जरी का पूरा एक टॉपिक ही क्लियर हो जाता है यहाँ पे सीधा सीधा लिखा है कि सबसे पहले मैक बर्नी इस पॉइंट को ढूंढा हमने फिर उसके मैंने ऑलरेडी पढ़ लिया ये तो इस मुझे पता है मैक मैक बर्नी इस पॉइंट को ढूंढा हमने फिर उसके बाद इंसर्शन लगा उसके ऐसे ऐसे सर्जरी का एक एक छोटे छोटे स्टेप्स लिखे हैं इसमें मेरे जो पेशेंट है उसकी जब हिस्ट्री ली गई तो पता चला कि छः महीने पहले इनको अपेंडिक्स का ऑपरेशन हुआ था उस अपेंडिक्स के ऑपरेशन की वजह से इनके एडिजन्स बन गए बॉडी के अंदर और वो जो एडिशंस एडिजन्स बने उसकी वजह से छः महीने बाद एक्यूट इंटेस्टाइनल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन हो गया फिर जब हमने एक्सरे देखा तो हमें पता चला ये तो स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन का ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन है लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन का नहीं है तो अब सीधा हम रूम में चलते हैं और एक्सरे ही दिखाते हैं आपको फिर हम सीधे सर से बात करेंगे और पूरा केस डिस्कशन करेंगे इसका 
एंड ये जो पीछे आप एक्सरे देख रहे हो दिस इज द एक्यूट इंटेस्टाइनल ऑब्सट्रक्शन का एक्सरे लेट्स जस्ट देखते हैं सो दिस इज द एक्सरे ऑफ एक्यूट इंटेस्टाइनल ऑब्सट्रक्शन हेयर यू कैन सी यहाँ गड़बड़ी है पेशेंट के हेलो एवरी वन मैन इज डॉक्टर शुभम जैन एंड टूडे आई एम इन कॉन्वर्जेशन विद डॉक्टर एन के मालपानी सर सर सो टूडे आई एम हेयर टू डिस्कस अ केस एंड ट्राई टू लर्न फ्रॉम डॉक्टर सर एंड ओवर टूडे इज डिस्कशन इज एक्यूट इंटरस्टैंड ऑप्शक्चर एंड आई हैव अ फाइल ऑफ पेशेंट सो वेयर वी कैन लर्न फ्रॉम सर कैन यू Uh, just, just we we don't uh, need to discuss the patient name and uh, and all that. This is the patient, a lady of 26 years old, who reported us with distension of abdomen, severe pain in the abdomen, vomiting, and absolute constipation. With a past history of or some operation about six months back, somewhere else. As per history, she was operated for appendix and small abdominal cyst. With this history, we she took treatment for two three days somewhere else for this acute problem, but not relieved. Since the patient reported after three four days or two three days, and all the signs symptoms of acute intestinal obstruction persisted, so on examination, we found that it is. I felt that it is not going to relieve conservatively. Already conservatively was given to her. While examining and with history, we in acute intestinal obstruction we suspect in these cases, especially when there is history of previous operation, post-operative additions, additions causing acute intestinal obstruction, or some other pathologies like valvulus of the intestine, bands in the Internal cavity passing over the intestinal lumen and causing acute intestinal obstruction. The clinical diagnosis was not suggestive of large intestinal obstruction. It was a small intestinal obstruction. Uh, <coughs> then an X-ray was done to differentiate further to differentiate large intestinal obstruction and small intestinal obstruction. That too suggest acute intestinal obstruction of a small bowel origin. And the in terms of Multiple air fluid levels in the X-ray, and there was not a large level of fluid, etc., which we found in the um, large intestinal obstruction, and especially in sigmoid valvulus, there is a scooted tire-like operative appearance that was also not there. So, acute intestinal obstruction can occur in peritonitis also. But there was no evidence of peritonitis. There was neither fever nor toxemia. So, more or less, we thought it to be a post-operative lesions because there was history of post-operative operation in last six months back. We decided for operation after taking the consent of the patient and relations. We took the patient to operation theater under G. We. Opened the abdomen by right pyramidal incision, and the incision was given a little lower down, more than the upper down, because there was suspicion of post-operative adhesions on the previous scar, which was present in the right leg fossa, uh, suggestive of appendicectomy. A gridiron incision on the back bone is point that was the appearance of this patient. Sir, can I can I ask you a question? Ah, right. Sir, uh, after admission of the patient and before operation, sir, uh, we in especially in acute intestinal obstruction, uh, a new doctors like me, we have to uh, know the basics. For example, uh, we do not, we can't give food after uh, the uh, diagnosis. We have to do patient NP or nil nil permolar, and we also have to insert a rail tube. So, how can a new doctor like me? Uh, handle a case like that in in, in the beginning of my yeah. career. I, I, I did not mention in the uh, previously conservative uh, treatment which was given to this patient. In all such patients, a conservative line of treatment must be tried 
to relieve the obstruction. In more than 60% patient, patients, in post-operative adhesions patient, patient released by conservative treatment and 40% require operation. What conservative treatment? The conservative treatment will lungs, nothing only, rise to respiration because decompression of the obstructed intestine is a must to relieve the obstruction. And then once we are patient is nil orally, so IV infusions should be given according to the need of the patient. Taking care of our counts, suggestive of any infection, antibiotics should be given for the conservative treatment. For painkiller, simple diclofenic sodium can be given. Antispasmodic should be avoided in these cases because they will further enhance the distension and obstruction. Uh, if not relieved by the diclofenic sodium, then tramadol or other painkillers can be added of higher grade, then patient will be relieved. The, there is a quite good relief of the pain once you put the rice tube and decompress the stomach. So that is a very important part to put the rice tube. And one should know how to put the rice tube, that is a very important thing. Yes, sir. Rice tube itself is a big subject. If I talk what rice tube does, that it decompress the stomach. How to put, I will tell some other time. It decompress the stomach. So, recent pain due to distension is relieved. Patient becomes little comfortable. And the, due to distension of the stomach, there is a rising of the diaphragm. Upper rising and that compresses the lungs. So, respiratory distress is also there, that is also relieved. And once we de decompress the stomach, then there is a reverse flow of the fluid, intestinal fluid to the stomach and the intestine gets decompressed. So further decompression gives relief to the patient. And in such patient when there is no infection and I want to stress at this point that sometimes there is gangrene. In patients who are gangrenous and the intestine gangrene is there, then there, there are certain signs which are very important. If it is impending gangrene, no pain relie reliever will relieve the pain. No painkiller will relieve the pain of the patient. Impending gangrene. Once the gangrene sets up, sets in, then pain will be relieved automatically and distension will be there. So that is important. One should watch. There is a tachycardia in these patients. There is a, a other signs of septicemia in these species of gangrene. So once you think or diagnose that gangrene is there, then patient should be operated immediately so that further deterioration and multi-system failure does not occur. The gathering can be established further on clinical grounds, of course, one can establish, but nowadays it is always imperative to go for a CT scan to decide the gangrene because medical legal problems are nowadays increasing. So one has the government to go also for these patients. But if patient is poor and can't afford, then clinical grounds are good enough. So, the, what I was talking about the rice tube. So, rice tube is an important part. It helps in it improves the respiration because of decompression and uh, settling of the diaphragm downwards and relief of the distension and pain by decompression of the stomach and intestines also. The decompression of the small bowel relieves ultimately at the site of obstruction and thinking is reduced and obstruction is relieved. I won't able to explain you how it is relieved, but one can think of like this, if there is an obstruction of this loop here and it is distended, the kink is more here. There is a lot of kink and fluid will not go because it will push the rest of the intestine other side and kink will increase, angle will increase. So kink is more. Once we decompress and then intestine will become like this and kink will reduce, the acute angle will reduce and there are chances of relief. Then in these patients, we can add judiciously steroids as an anti-inflammatory. I am using the word judicious. One has to be very judicious because sometimes steroids may cause problem also. So a single or two shots of this Dexona or Prednisolone can be given. Solubatrol is another long-acting or uh, very highly active 
uh, steroid is uh, given to these patients to reduce the inflammation, which helps reduction in inflammation, helps in uh, relief of the obstruction. So that is what our condition is. So once the patient starts passing letters and motion, that is serious relief. But here also I want to stress upon that sometimes the stool and flatus is passed because of the movement of the distal wall that is distal to the obstruction. And that should be carefully, you should carefully orient the patient that that is not happening. It should not be taken as the treatment or relief in the obstruction. Sir, uh, one last question, sir. Sir, uh, what are the diagnostic tests uh, that we can uh, do before uh, diagnosing the acute intestinal obstruction? And one more question. Uh, what are the main causes that uh, we can point out that there are adhesion that leads to this intestinal obstruction? Yes, for the first thing that any patient of intestinal obstruction, there are clinical signs, absolute obstruction, the, the complete acute obstruction, that is a concern. Complete obstruction is suggestive of there are features, acute pain, distension, vomiting and absolute constipation. Absolute constipation that patient is not passing factors as well as this stool. That is absolute constipation. These four features are very important for clinical history. When you examine, distension is there. Loops of the intestine are felt on that when you palpate them. And while you are palpating, sometimes high peristalsis, gurgling sounds are felt under your hand. That is also. When you ascultate these patients, there are hyperperistalsis and sometimes tingling sounds are heard. Tingling sounds are like that, but something is falling on the drum. Something, some water is falling on the drum and that gives a noise or a voice of a tabla or something like that. So that is tingling sound. That is very important sign. And further, uh, there is a X-ray, you can go for an X-ray in standing position, which I already told you, multiple air through levels are important signs in the X-ray. Uh, sir, so, uh, given G or CT scan, sir, which uh, diagnostic test is better for this patient? CT scan will be better. One can decide on USG also, but I feel that in the superfluous uh, uh, investigation, that will not give an accuracy of the diagnosis. Yes, sir. And sir, uh, in my surgery books, I also uh, said that uh, sometimes tuberculosis of intestine can also lead to so this problem. So, uh, what you asked that what are the various causes of the acute intestinal obstruction? That one thing we have decided in this case by history that it was postoperative lesions. The other thing, vomulus, that is twisting of the intestine on the recently, that is another thing. Infection, any perforation leading to peritonitis or Retronitis without perforation can lead to obstruction. Any blunt trauma of the abdomen may lead to obstruction due to hemorrhage in the peritoneal cavity. That may also, along with the perforation. Then tuberculosis, malignancy, and such other inflammatory diseases leads to obstruction. There are sometimes what we call pseudo obstruction in bronze disease. When there is no, no mechanical obstruction, there is no site of obstruction. But the loop of intestine becomes a peristaltic and that gives a picture of obstruction. Yes. That is a very difficult situation in the patients. Sir, thank, thank you sir for providing such a great information to young doctors. And sir, thank you sir, I, I really appreciate sir. Thank you sir. Thank you for sharing with me. Okay sir.